Belding Lake, Belding Reef, all this area here, the third chain, all this back in this area here. You know, we've had uh, winds that's kind of been a little bit everywhere. We've had some little choppy fronts that's come in that hadn't been uh, too terribly bad, but they have changed stuff. They do change stuff for a short amount of time, so you always have to take that in consideration. We talked about that maybe a couple of weeks ago, uh, some fronts that came in here and there, but that's, again, they're going to line up, and they're going to start rolling in here about every eight to ten days, it looks like. Uh, these areas in here, in the Belding Lake, Belding Reef area, uh, protected areas, especially if you got south, southeast breeze, southwest breeze, north, northwest, uh, can be very good for you depending on what side of the reef that you're going to fish fish on and what side, uh, which way your wind is coming from. You know, you work the third chain, all this area in here, uh, Belding's Reef is, is holding some fish. You've got the shell bar that's in this area here and the cedar dugout as well. Work inside the shell shell reefs that are here. You know, you got a little cut through there, or you can come all the way around into Mesquite and come around to the where the third chain actually is and kind of slide up into those areas there. You've got great areas. It's got just a little bit deeper water in some sections of it, a little, little shallower water of it, or up around the islands on the third chain have been holding some fish. We've caught some nice uh, trout in those areas. Uh, some scattered redfish and some scattered black drum as well have, uh, have all been in this area here. Um, you know, the, the main baits that we've been throwing in these particular areas, uh, again, the uh, Down South Twisted T, uh, the original chicken chicken of the sea in those smaller sizes. Again, we're going to be in a full moon phase by the time that this video posts, so you make sure that you're downsizing your uh, profiles and have smaller baits available to you first thing in the morning and late evening. Full moon bites in the middle of the day are extremely difficult unless you're really working around a bite frame which would, would be a major at that point in time. So depending on where you're at, where you're fishing, uh, up in these areas here, or wherever you're choosing to fish, uh, make sure that you take that into consideration when you decide what baits that you want to throw. For us, the, again, the main things have been working is the down south, uh, original size, and the, and the, uh, the burner shad have been very good. Those smaller baits have been really good. So uh, Little John's, in multiple different flavors just get you a little john and work that and either you know if you got your darker water you got your darker baits lighter color water up in this area here most of the time this water is going to be just a little bit more stained or off color or maybe even packed practically dirty depending on how much wind it gets to it uh, the uh, knock and tail lures have been dynamite as well in both the uh, uh, heavy metal greenback uh, another one in the watermelon red which is a three and a quarter which that would be a great smaller size during that full moon phase uh, the, the marker 54 jerk shrimp has been really good. So if you want to tie that underneath the popping cork and work that along this shell bar or these edges where it drops just a little bit, it's a great choice to do that. Uh, topwater bait hasn't been quite as effective. We're still getting a little bit of activity with it, but if you want to throw that as well, you could just from a, from a noise-making standpoint to see maybe something early in the mornings during that uh, full moon bite frame as we're coming off of that full moon on the you know, 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but anything after that you're going to want to throw, you know, the, again, the smaller profile baits to work these areas. Again, make sure that you're working these majors and minors during these time frames. That's been the most productive for the artificial game. Again, as we continue to move into November, December's up on the horizon. It's not too far away. January will be here before you know it. This is the time frame. This is, if you're an artificial person, this is the best time to be throwing artificial moving forward until we get into to May or even June, because this is this is the prime time for, for artificial people. So continue to throw those baits, work these areas. Again, third chain, all this area, build, Buildings Reef, Building Lake, all these different areas have had fish and have had uh, a decent amount of fish working in these particular areas. Backside of mud, all this back in here, this big flat that's on the backside, nice muddy, grassy area. You've got a... Sh you got a bar that you can work that's got a gut that runs out. And if you fished backside of Mud Island very much, you know about this area a lot. And it runs all the way down to the end, down to Blind Pass. And it's a great area to fish. You've got lots of opportunity here. And the one thing that's happened in the last few days is that we've had a lot of extra water come in again. We've had higher than normal tides. Uh, anticipate that to drop out, especially around this full moon. But while we have the opportunity... And if you're paying attention to your tide reports, and if you're not, you should be because they're extremely important, especially if you know lots of different areas to fish and what water levels work better in other areas. Some places are high tide places, some places are low tide places. 
uh, just because of the type of structure and the kind of depth of the water that's there. Those, that tide report is extremely important, so make sure that you're paying attention to it, and if not, you need to incorporate it into your fishing day, especially early in the morning to have your game plan. You need to have a plan in place when you're fishing, no matter what it is, uh, so you can execute that plan, and that, that helps you kind of stay on track, and it helps you if, you if your first or second locations are not doing as productive or producing as much as you would like for it to be, then you have that, that third spot or fourth spot that you can go fish that area. And those tide reports becoming even more uh, accessible and e easy for you to fish those areas based on what they're telling you. But that said, all these areas back in there, man, you got little back lakes that dump off in here. With this extra water, these back lakes really become uh, uh, very productive because it pushes fish back into these areas. You get opportunities there. These fish feel protected when they're back in these back lakes because there's nobody. There's not much pressure on them. There's not many boats that can get back to them. Maybe a pulling skiff or maybe one of the skinny water running boats, but you're going to pretty much be on a uh, either wading these areas, so it's it's really stealthy, and that's the key thing about when you're fishing these areas back in here is, is being very stealthy in lots of these back lakes and a lot of these little mouths and stuff that you want to have your opportunity to catch your fish. Again, the main things we've been finding and locating have been, been redfish all back in these areas. Caught a few scattered trout here, nothing great. Um, black drum. Some flounder as well have been pushed back in some of these areas here. So have some great opportunities at some of those. Again, the main thing that's been working the best for us in these areas and these back lakes uh, has been the, the down south, has been the knock and tail lures, uh, little johns, jerk shrimp. All those baits have been productive in these areas. Those four primary baits that we've been throwing. Just kind of been paying attention to what the water clarity is and what the water looks like based on that color like that. Then we'll throw it to that and see. If you're fishing solo by yourself, you know, have your variety of stuff in your box when you're wading these areas so you can change them out if something's not working really good for you. But I can tell you this, again, during this uh, full moon phase, if you're not throwing a smaller profile bait like a, like the burner shad or the knock and tail, the smaller version, the three and a quarter inch, which is both in, in the uh, smoke flavor and uh, watermelon red. So those are like, again, those are three and a quarter the, the burner shad is right there with it, the same size. Mirror lure, little johns are the same way. They're, they're that size, uh, profile size is really good. That's what you primarily need to start with. Now, if the fish dictate to you that they want something a little bit bigger in profile than the uh, soft dine, if you've got enough water to, to, to really work that, or if you're really good, adept at working that soft dine uh, at the top of the top of the water column and not let it get down into that grass because lots of these areas got lots of grass over it and lots of great opportunity with the potholes. So those are things that you really need to pay attention to. Uh, these softer baits like the uh, XL, uh, the soft dines, the Paul Browns, all these baits are fixed to really come into play, especially as we have cooler weather that will begin to filter into these areas. Uh, those baits really become lively and are really good to work. But you can always stick with your old standbys with your plastics and still get the same effect. Again, 16th ounce jig head is primarily all that we're throwing. Nothing heavier than that because most of the water that we're fishing is going to be waste of thigh deep anyway, and you don't want to give that bait just where it just jumps down into that grass because you're, you're going to constantly fight that if you do. So the 16th ounce is uh, something that you really want to consider if you're not doing that now. So that will help you uh, help that bait to really glide through the water column. So uh, keep that in mind. And there again, majors and minors are very important, especially during this time frame. Uh, as we have again, the fronts will begin to push through almost weekly. It, it seems like anyway, about an eight to ten day period. Uh, find these areas here. They'll protect you from those north breezes on the backside. You may be a little, as long as you can navigate to it safely during a rough time, then that's fine. If you cannot, just keep yourself protected in areas where you need to be. But again, work these all these areas back in here. Pay attention to that tide report and those majors and minors. Get over here off of Newcomb Point. Wait all this shoreline on the outside. You know, you got a uh, strong southeast breeze and you're gonna wanna be on the inside of here, down this area here into Newcomb Bend. Uh, it heads back out down in toward the Holiday Beach area, that nice little draw that comes back around a little cove. Really protects you and sets you up from that northeast breeze. You can wade all this. You've got a lot of different structure in here. You've got shell in here. You've got mud in here. You've got grass. You've got a few small little back lake mouths. It's got little deeper guts and stuff that allow for fish to kind of hang out into. We've caught a few flounder back in there. Again, uh, if you're not aware, November till I think the middle of December, flounder season is closed. 
You can catch them, but you just cannot keep them. Be lots of catch and release on that, which we've already experienced in the last few days. Uh, it's been nice to see some of these nicer fish there, and it's nice to see them go back. But that said, you know, you can locate some trout and redfish in here. Scattered black drum ever so often. Again, it's not something I'm particularly uh, are, uh, am targeting, but the Little Johns are really good at catching those. The uh, Down South original size in uh, that magic grass flavor has, uh, has done pretty good as well, you know, accidentally, but they're eating it. But anyhow, uh, this area all back down here, all the way back up to Holiday Beach is a great opportunity for you, especially if you've got a nice windy day. You can put in right there across from the Copano Bay Bridge and shoot straight across. It's not that far. won't beat you up, and it's easy to get to, and it can be productive. As long as you got bait working in there and you incorporate a major and a minor into this area, then it's a good place to be. Now, if you're catching one of these uh, fronts that's pushing in, you got that northeast, uh, north uh, wind that come down to the front half side of it. You've got the same... Pretty much the same type of structure as you got on the back side. A little less mud, a little bit more firmer uh, foundation that we're all down in here, but you've got great structure. You've got uh, hill and dale that's in here, so you've got some gutters, if you will. Kind of like if you're at the beach, you got a sandbar and then a gut, a sandbar and a gut, but it's it's pretty much the same way in here. You've got scattered grass all the way down to the corner toward uh, the uh, the bridge. This whole area here, you can, you can wade all this. You've got lots of different structures in here. Again... These fish will push up into here. Uh, again, with the, the, the amount of water that we have pushed up here, you have to get up there real pretty close to the tight to shoreline. You'll find redfish that are up in some of these areas. You've got little back lake mouths that, that uh, dump out into the front half of this, maybe a couple of those. But you just have different, you got an edge that's out there uh, that's, that can be productive for you. Just Again, you just have to work these areas and see what's going on. Get all the way down into the corner down there. You've got some more mud and some scattered shell that's back in there that can hold some nice fish from time to time back in there. Again, the original size on the down south lures have been have been very key for us. Again, the uh, also the uh, burner shad has been very good. You know, white ice, purple rain, uh, twisted tea, three flavors in particular have been very good. Uh, the uh, again the original size in uh, the chicken of the sea and the twisted tea as well has been good. Uh, over on the knock and tail side, again, the same flavors in the magic or uh, greenback and heavy metal have been good. Depending on that, watermelon red and smoke flavor, all those flavors have been good. Jerk shrimp, again, any of those ones, if you've got those in your box, throw them. See what's going to work with. Again, the 16th ounce jig head is the, the all that we've been throwing, keeping that bait where we can really keep it into the water column for a long time, and that's pretty key. Uh, so if you're not allowing that bait to get down into the grass, and to do everything that it needs to do for you. You can keep it up in the water column. It's easier to work for you with that lighter jig head. You can you can throw it just as far as you need to. Allow that wind to help you if you've got the right wind set up. Fishing all these areas back up in here again. Majors and minors are always a key thing, especially right now during this time of year. We're really pushing around those. We're giving the, the fish the whole thing. Fish the, fish the whole two hours, two and a half hours, whatever you like around that major or minor if you have that opportunity. Uh, at some point in time in and around that bite frame, you're going to get opportunities and you're going to see that increase if you pay attention to that. But again, work these areas very thorough. Pay attention to the tide reports and the majors and minors and also the weather that's coming.